No holds barred. That's one way to describe the presidential campaign. If it is Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton, Trump says the Benghazi attack and Hillary Clinton's emails will be part of the fight. Our next guest is a friend of the Clintons. His new book is about another president, Abraham Lincoln. It's called The Self-Made Man, The Political Life of Abraham Lincoln, 1809 to 1849. The author, Sidney Blumenthal, joins us now. Mr. Blumenthal, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Let's start with Hillary Clinton's emails. The big fear of many Democrats who I've spoken to is that Hillary Clinton will, will become the nominee of the Democratic Party, and then something will happen during the general. There will be some bombshell, another shoe will drop, and it will scuttle her race. How confident are you that that won't happen? I'm very confident that uh, that will not happen. How do you know? My understanding is that this is a security review. It's certainly not a criminal investigation. But it is an investigation. It's an inquiry. Uh, into whether or not anyone intentionally put classified information where it shouldn't be. And my understanding is that they will conclude, and the Department of Justice will issue a statement at the end, that that was not the case. And then all those who were involved in this kind of uh, political hysteria will have to unravel it. Do you think it is a problem that it continues to drag on, that, it's, that the email investigation is dragging on? We don't have an outcome of that yet. The Benghazi uh, Commission, the um, one run by Trey Gowdy in Congress, says that they will release their findings in the summer. So all of this drags on until it butts up against the general. Well, um, I'm sure that the Department of Justice is uh, not a political investigation at all and that um, it wants to resolve this as quickly as possible. And when they do, they'll issue a statement. Donald Trump does not want to resolve this as quickly as possible. And in fact, he says that he will make an issue of these things, among others, uh, if he is going against Hillary Clinton in the general. So he's just put out a new ad about Benghazi, a new video, I should say, on Instagram about Benghazi. Let me show this to you and our viewers. We've seen rage and violence directed at American embassies over an awful internet video she lied to me she told me it was the fault of the video she said we are going to have the filmmaker arrested who was responsible for the death of your son so she did say to you that the benghazi attack was caused by protests absolutely <laughs> well, i don't know why that's funny how damaging do you think something like that is well there have been eight inquiries already that have concluded there's no wrongdoing. After the first one, the uh, Pickering Mullen uh, Commission, uh, Hillary impl implemented as Secretary of State all of their recommendations for uh, security. So um, let's see what uh, this uh, Benghazi committee uh, winds up doing. And uh, if it's inconsistent with the other ones in its core findings, then we might conclude that it is um, consistent instead with what uh, House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy said, which was that it's a partisan political well, inquiry intended to upset Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. Um, back to her emails for uh, a second. You know, the Republicans say that it shows bad judgment, that she used her own um, email, her personal server. She has said clearly why she didn't want to use more than one device. She's described herself as sort of not technologically adroit enough to be juggling different devices. We all understand that. But why did she set up a personal server? That's beyond just using one device for personal and professional emails. Why did she need the personal server? Well, that's a question I don't know the answer to, and it's a question that uh, uh, she's uh, explained. And so you'd have to, um, you know, go to her explanation about that. I mean, I ask you because you, the emails that have been released show that you were in regular contact with her. You're one of, you were giving her advice on all sorts of policy things and political things. Did you talk to her about setting up a personal server? Oh, no. Uh, I had nothing to do with that. I, I write about, I write Lincoln and I write Hillary. And one of them has replied. <laughs> Really? You haven't heard from Abraham Lincoln? Not, not while I was doing my book on his formative education. If you had known she had a personal server, would you have told her? Not a good idea. Uh, I have no idea. Uh, we're old friends. Uh, and when you're a friend of um, 
somebody who's in the middle of politics, you get caught up in politics, too. Let's talk about your book, A Self-Made Man, The Political Life of Abraham Lincoln. What more is there to say about Abraham Lincoln? <laughs> well, uh, there's a lot to say about Abraham Lincoln. Uh, you know, we're involved in a uh, campaign about the making of a president. And my book is about the making of America's greatest political genius. Uh, and somebody who was lucky to have a log cabin and transformed himself into the man who was a, uh, uh, a political, skillful, professional politician. And through those skills, uh, ended slavery and saved the United States. So um, that's a lesson here for this campaign. So there's something to say about that, that um, there's not a difference between politics and principle, and that if you want to achieve your principles, it's, uh, you need to be politically skillful to be able to do it. And there's another point, which is that looking for people beyond politics, for a hero, for a man on horseback, can also be something that um, can undermine our democracy and doesn't advance it. That's interesting. You write here in the book. Lincoln always believed that politics offered the only way to achieve his principles. He discovered the promise of American life and created the man who became Abraham Lincoln through politics itself. I mean, that is the sort of rosy, um, inspirational view of politics. Now, we often don't see it that way. Well, I don't know if it's rosy and inspirational. The kind of politics that uh, Lincoln had to deal with was uh, as rough and tumble as the politics today and maybe even more so. Uh, he grew up on the frontier. And uh, uh, they were as uh, contentious, competitive, and uh, co even combative uh, as uh, today. There were even duels, uh, as we know, between people. Yeah. And uh, Lincoln was subjected to withering criticism, uh, including racist criticism of him. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, what we're seeing today is not... And what Lincoln had to go through to achieve his end yeah. provides a lesson for us today. Lots of parallels. Sidney Blumenthal, thanks so much for coming in and being on New Day. Thank you.